everyone, it's Sharonda from Pay Your Weights, and today I'm going to be reviewing Exo Kitty Season 1, which is currently streaming on the Netflix platform. The series is created by Jenny Han and stars Anna Cathcart as we center around Kitty, who is the youngest of the Cubby sisters, who is on her quest to find true love. So for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome, hello, so glad you came, I hope you stay. I'll tell you what I liked about the series, what I didn't like about the series, and is it worth your time or not binging Exo Kitty on Netflix? So for those of you who might not know, there is this like cool little franchise that we had on Netflix called To All the Boys I've Loved Before series, which is based on Jenny Hines' um, books that she has written as well. And so Kitty was one of like the standout characters for me. I really adored her and I was so excited when they announced that they were going to be doing a spinoff series with her character Kitty. Um, so one of the things that I really do enjoy about this series is I like that we just get to just be in Kitty's presence, okay? She is happy about love, okay? She is trying to get her true love's first kiss. And I love this kind of, you have characters that get you excited about romance, get you excited about what it felt like to have your first true love or what it felt like to yearn for your first kiss. And I think that she does such a great job of just having just this like optimism that everything is gonna work out. I'm gonna figure things out. I like that we get that at the beginning of the series with Kitty. Um, also, too, I do love that we got to see some, we get to see her dad and her stepmom, but I'll get into that and some of the issues that I have with the continuity of kind of bringing Kitty and still bringing that previous world of To All the Boys I Loved Before um, into the Exo Kitty universe as well. But I do love that they showcase um, Korean culture. A lot of times when you, you know, you have series like this, they might say like, we're at this boarding school called Kiss in Korea. But, you know, they really don't show you, you don't get to see any cultural things about it. And I like that we get to see cultural dances, that we get to see cultural food. They talk about like little things like we don't, we don't eat this in Korea or, you know, that's an American thing. I also love how as we get to meet some of the characters, you know, you have Kitty, you know, who is mixed. You have another character by the name of Alex who is adopted by white parents. And I like how they kind of showcase even the cultural differences of those who might be Asian American, but also to those who are fully immersed within the Asian culture growing up overseas. I like that we actually get to see those differences, how some may feel less than or feel treated differently. I like that they don't try to kind of gloss over that, that they kind of call things out. There's like little lines and stuff in there where you get to feel like, what does it mean to be Asian America when you actually have these students who are at this boarding school? And so um, I thought it was pretty cool to actually see that. So um, also too, what I will say is, I think that they had do a really great job with Kitty's friend group. I actually like the friends so much that I wanted more, but once again, we gonna get into that because we do got some issues with this series, but I do love Kitty's friend group. Q, um, I really enjoyed Q. And I really love that they're checking a box, but I like that Q's character, you know, Q is queer, but Q's a jock and Q is smart that they're kind of taking these, you know, if it was a jock, probably wouldn't be queer, definitely wouldn't be smart. You know, they have these like dumb jock tropes. And I like that they kind of try to break some of those tropes that we see um, in series like this. And I really love a character like Q um, who just felt very well-rounded so much that I wanted to spend even more time with him. I think a lot of people's favorite is going gonna, is gonna to be, is going to be Mino, Mino. I love Mino. And I like that also too, like you have this gorgeous, you know, this gorgeous student who all the girls like fall in love with, but there is a more sensitive side to him as we get to learn more about, you know, his upbringing, family dynamics that I love that they have these you know, male characters who aren't afraid to showcase their emotions, their feelings, and they're fully in tune with who they are. And I really love that with both of these characters. Now also too, I do love Yuri. Yuri grew on me in the second half of the show, but the first half I was like, I don't know about you, Yuri, cause hmm, kind of get on my nerves a little bit. But I like as we get to learn more about who Yuri is and kind of, you know, what it means to be the girl who has it all. But as you delve deeper into her personal life, we get to see that everything might not be as good as it seems. And so I like that we have these different characters who would typically present themselves in a certain way. But as we get to learn more about who they are and what they're dealing with, I like that they're not necessarily your traditional type of characters. Now, also, too, 
Um, one of the things that I did love about this series is that we get to see more about Kitty's connection with her mother. You know, as the Covey sisters, you know, their mother died young and, you know, they didn't have as many memories as they would want to. And especially for someone like Kitty, who was very young, I like that we get to see the continuation of them, of her trying to be closer to her mom. Um, I think it's, that's one of the things that kind of tugs at your heartstrings as she's trying to figure out who she was at this school. How does she kind of compare to her mother? What characteristics, you know, come from her, come from her mother that she possesses? I like when we actually get to, you know, get into that. And I also, too, love, like, you know, all these kids, they got money. Not everybody got money, but most of these kids got money. So I like kind of the different scenarios that they find themselves in. I like how the school looks, you know, what a rich, preppy, sporty school would look like with all of these students. Um, I do like the campus of KISS as we get to learn more about all of the different students and some of the history that has happened at the school as well. Now, even though I do have things that I enjoyed about it, I do like the second half of the season. I think once the series finds its footing, it became very interesting. It's very um, bingeable. I think there's seven episodes. There are no more than 30 minute episodes. Um, but I do think as the series continues to go on, as you get out of this roller coaster of mess that's kind of happening, I think that's where the series begins to shine. To the point as we get to the season one finale, it actually made me even more invested in wanting to get a season two to figure out what happened to all of our characters. Now, that is pretty much all of the good things that I have to say about it. I have a lot of issues with Exo Kitty, y'all. This series is kind of a mess. It's one of those series where you have these characters that you like and you want to know more about but the writers can't seem to get out of their own way of introducing too many subplots, just checking too many boxes that don't make sense. And one of those really has to do with Kitty, okay? Kitty has so much going on. Like Kitty is just living a chaotic life for no reason. And there's something that they do with her character that is a really, really big deal that I didn't see coming and not in a good way. There's something that happens with Kitty. There's this you know, as she's getting to learn more about herself, as she's getting to understand, you know, her love life a little bit better, you know, Kitty kind of has a revelation. And for me, I would be okay with that if it made sense for the character of who Kitty has been from the To All the Boys I Love Before series to where we find her in Exo Kitty. It felt very out of place. It felt very much like we're just going to check a box and we're going to do this to like just create crazy conflict that makes no sense whatsoever and I really hate when we try to do things for diversity's sake or we try to do things to say we're hip we're cool like we're into all of the things that the kids are into now and it just felt like they were checking the box it it literally happens in a way where you're just like I'm sorry what like huh and it almost cheapens the moment to where you feel as though it doesn't feel genuine that kitty would feel this way you guys will probably already know what I'm talking about. I don't want to spoil it for anyone that hasn't seen it. But also, too, the relationship between Kitty and Day. Kitty and Day have been in this long distance, like, four-year relationship, head over heels in love. My girl comes from across the, the world to come be with this boy. And as we get to learn, you know, what's happening with their relationship, kind of the back and forth, will they, won't they, I felt like Day got done, was done kind of dirty. <laughs> like you start the series off about this person who she's head over heels for, but because we're introducing so many subplots, so many love interests, so many random situations that happen between Kitty and Day and whoever the hell, whoever else she's involved with at the time, it kind of makes their relationship not, it feels unauthentic. And in order for this series to really work and for you to understand the roller coaster that Kitty is in as far as her love life, you have to believe in that relationship. But how they treat Day as a character, you kind of lose interest in Day to the point where it almost questions why was Kitty interested in Day in the first place? And I felt like if we spent a little bit more time with Day's situation, and more time with Day and Kitty's relationship, or maybe even establishing a little bit more of their connection before we actually got into the relationship drama, I felt like it would have been better served. And I felt like Day would have had a little bit more justice than what Day had. 
And I think that's what to all the boys gets right. Because you're only focused on one singular relationship, you have time to flesh things out and it makes it makes the audience want to actually root for these characters to be together. Now, also too, there's too many sub subplots that are happening. We got stuff happening with Kitty trying to figure out this mystery about her mama. We got people trying to find their birth parents. We got scholarships being taken away. Like it's just, it's so, it's so much. Like it's just a lot. And I just want them to pick a struggle, okay? Because there were too many struggles happening to Exo Kitty that I was just like, damn, I forgot about this subplot. Like we came back to this a couple episodes later, but I forgot this was even happening. And also too, because of that, because there's so much happening. And because there's no purpose behind anything happening, you literally can figure out the series like after the first couple of episodes. Like you know exactly how this is going to end. And while most of the time that's okay, but it was just blatantly obvious. So I think that the first half of Exo Kitty is actually pretty chaotic. And even when we get to the, the finale, I was still just like, so y'all just couldn't help yourselves. You just, you had to do this too. That would make sense for me. But even though I have a lot of issues with Exo Kitty, I will say that the second half of the series finally finds its footing as we get to the season one finale. And honestly, I think where it ends at the end of season one will set us up for a great season two now that they finally understand what they want to do with these characters. But I just hope that it does get renewed for a season two. I still love seeing Kitty. I love Kitty's friend group. I hope that we get to spend more time with them. I can't wait. I'm not going to tell y'all who I'm shipping, but I think you know who I'm shipping anyway. But also to Justice for Day. But I'm interested to know what you thought about Exo Kitty. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whose team are you on? Like, what relationship are you shipping right now? Let me know in the comment section below. What did you think? Did you love the series? What did you love about it? Who's your favorite character from the season? But those are my thoughts on Exo Kitty. I think you guys should go ahead and give it a watch. I think it's a fun and easy binge. You're going to get your life. If you love YA content like I do, if you love believing in love again, you're going to have a good time with Exo Kitty. It might be a little bumps along the way, but you're going to get through the ride and you're going to enjoy it, all right? So those are my thoughts on Exo Kitty Season 1. As always, my name is Sharonda from Hero Weights, and if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit that notification bell. And I love you guys 3,000. And until I see you again, 